We've just been looking at examples of how to use sine, cosine, and tangent to figure out unknown angles, and we can also do things with unknown sides. So we've just been looking at this, this trick called Sokatoa. Right? We've just been using that uh, right here. We've been using Sokatoa to remember how sine, cosine, and tangent work. Now that brings up a really, really lame joke, but I have to share it with you because that's what I do. Uh, so what does trigonometry have in common with the beach? This is so bad. They both have tangents. Ha 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 ha. Oh, that's bad. Let's keep going. Okay, so let's do an example. We have an angle theta is an acute angle. And I like that word. That's, that's a cute angle. Ha ha. It's so cute because it's small. What acute means, this is important though, acute means the angle is less than 90 degrees. See, if you have something that's greater than 90 degrees, we call it obtuse. So like an obtuse angle would be something like this. So this right here was the angle. It's greater. This right here would be 90 degrees. See, the angle is greater than 90 degrees. We call it obtuse. But in this case, we have, a, we have an acute angle. So we have this acute angle, and we know that sine of theta is one-third. And the question says, without a calculator, find cosine of theta and find tan of theta. Or not find, but calculate. So how do we actually do this? We could actually just try to draw ourselves a triangle. So maybe I'll do that. So I'm going to draw myself some sort of right angle triangle. It doesn't matter how I draw it or orient it. Maybe I'll do it like this. Something like this. I'm just drawing any old random triangle, but I'm going to start labeling it properly so then I can start calculating. So there's my angle. That's 90 degrees. And I know that sine of theta, so maybe I'll call this one here theta. I know that sine of theta is 1 over 3. So I remember what each of these means, right? This is, remember our trick with Sokatoa? Sokatoa. So what this means is that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So uh, which one is which here? We've got um, opposite to this angle is this one here. So that's opposite. And then the side that's opposite to the 90 degrees, that's always called the hypotenuse. And therefore this one here is the adjacent. This helps to sort of know which ones, you, which ones are which. Now, they told us, though, that sine of theta is one-third. If you think, oh, that's 0.3, where do I go from there? Now, leave it as a fraction. Because remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That tells you that this is opposite over hypotenuse. That means the opposite is 1, and the hypotenuse is 3. How clever is that? So that means that we can actually label now the opposite. This has a length of 1, and this one here has a length of, th uh, which one? Hypotenuse has a length of 3. Why is that? Because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine is 1 over 3. Now, I need to know what the adjacent is, because in order to know what cos is, for cos, I need adjacent. See, I need A here to do cos. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. I need that. Right, so I need to know that. So I know that cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I need to know adjacent. I don't know this. And just like with tan, tan theta is O over a so that's opposite over adjacent again i need adjacent so how do i find this length if this is a right angle triangle hopefully you've been watching my other video because i talk about pythagoras theorem and how to calculate it so i then know i can use pythagoras theorem so to find adjacent how do i do that i know that this one right here is going to be called c squared so i'm going to use this property that c squared equals a squared plus b squared remember c has always got to be the hypotenuse in this case, hypotenuse, that's 3. So 3 squared equals, now it doesn't matter which one I call A or B. Let's say I call A for adjacent, because maybe that makes sense. So I'll leave it A squared plus, and this one is 1 squared. Well, good news, 1 times 1 is easy, that's just 1. And 3 times 3 is 9. So I've got 9 equals A squared plus 1. Therefore, I've got uh, A squared equals 9 minus 1, because I want to move this one over. So now I have 8. And that means that a equals plus or minus, technically, but the square root of 8. Now, some people like to just leave it like this. Some people even like to calculate it on their calculator, but they said without a calculator. That's just because square root of 8 doesn't work out to be a nice number. It's not like square root of 9, which is just 3. Square root of 8 is not pretty. It's something else. But you can use a trick, though, and this might be a bit advanced. I'm not sure how often you've seen thirds before or these square roots, but we can rewrite square root of 8 as square root of 4 times square root of 2. That's the same thing, because 4 times 2 is 8. And the reason I did this is because square root of 4 is a nice number. It's a perfect square, we say. In other words, it's just 2. So that means this number, square root of 4, becomes just 2, and this becomes square root of 2. So this is the sort of reduced form. This is the exact, really fancy form for adjacent.
So if this right here is actually then 2 root 2, you could also say square root of 8, by the way, or you could also put it on your calculator. I'm just trying to show you if you want to be really mathematically correct, it's technically this. And that means then we can continue on our little way here. So we have then cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's 2 root 2 over, and what's the hypotenuse? It's 3. So there's my answer for cos theta. Do you notice they didn't want to know what theta was? They said, what's cos theta? Do you see how I didn't even have to find theta? I didn't care. I just said, oh, I don't know theta. I don't care about it. But I know what cos theta is. It's this fraction. And that's all I needed because that's all they asked for. See, they asked for cos theta. Tan theta in a similar way, I can do that. So tan is opposite over adjacent. So tan theta is going to be opposite. Let's see, that was 1. And adjacent, which is 2 root 2. So this right here would work. This could be your answer. Now, some math teachers say, oh, you should never put a square root on the bottom. Some people have a real problem with that. Um, I don't see it. it's a big problem, but oh well. So if you really want to fix that, then you can actually multiply the top and the bottom by the bottom. So that means I'm going to say 2 root 2 over 2 root 2, because this is still 1. That doesn't do anything really. But the reason I do that is then I'm going to get 1 times 2, which is 2 square root of 2, all that divided by, now here I do the 2 times 2, which is 4, and root 2 times root 2, uh, well, square root of 2 times square root of 2, that's like saying uh, square root of 2 squared, which is just 2. So that means then I would get 2 root 2 over 8, because that's 4 times 2, and I can reduce 2 over 8 is 1 over 4. So finally, I could actually say it's also root 2 over 4. What a lot of work just to get rid of a square root on the bottom. It turns out these are the same things. But, I mean, I think it's fine just to leave it like this. This is just fine. Uh, so that's how we can do this one. And it may have seemed complicated, but all we had to do is first use Pythagoras' theorem to find the adjacent, and then we then go ahead and do these. So that's how we found the adjacent. We found that the adjacent was this. right? And then we took that, and then we put it into here. See, we put it into there. That's how we did it. So let's maybe do another example. I think I have one more. Yeah. So here I say calculate C. So we have some triangle like this, and this is implied to be a right angle here. And if that's right angle, so is that. And we have just some extra information. Sometimes you've got this. Sometimes what you have to do with these triangle situations is start calculating what you can tell and slowly make your way where you are. Because we have an unknown angle, and we have a side C. So let's try to figure out then what, what in the world could we do here? Now you could actually look at this and it turns out this is really simple. I mean, I've drawn it like this just to make it look really confusing so you can be like, oh God, what do I do? I mean, you could actually find theta. Turns out that this right here is 90 and this right here is 35. So you could, you could calculate theta if you wanted to. But I'm just going to see, can we do this on its own? In other words, can we just isolate this one triangle here, this one right here? Just that one and try to forget about everything else. This is 2, this is C, and this is 35 degrees. That's all we're going to look at, nothing else. And it turns out if we do it that way, let's name our things here. So this is 90 degree, then that means this right here is the hypotenuse. If that's the hypotenuse, this is the angle, this is opposite to it. And that means this is necessarily the adjacent. And if that's the case, then I use either so, ka, or toa to help me out. And which one am I going to use? I'm going to use one that doesn't have opposite, because do you notice here I don't know what the opposite is? I know hypotenuse. Well, I want the hypotenuse, and I know adjacent. So here I'm going to use one that doesn't have opposite in it, so no O is allowed, so that means that's not there. I'm going to use cosine then. I'm going to say then cos of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Now let's actually fill it out. Luckily, I actually know theta. Theta is 35. That means I can say cos of 35 degrees is going to be equal to, now my S looks a little bit... Uh, so I want to make sure it looks like an S here. So cos of 35. And that's going to be equal to adjacent, which is 2, divided by my hypotenuse, which I don't know. In this case, they called it C. Now I need to use um, some algebra to get C on its own. I don't want C on the bottom. I want it on the top somewhere. So one thing I can do is multiply both sides by C. And that means then I could say that C times cos 35 equals 2. And that means if I want to get C on its own now, I divide both sides by cos 35. So C equals 2 over cos 35 degrees. And I can do that on my calculator. Now I like to do things a little bit backwards. Maybe you don't like to do it this way, but I like to take the most complicated thing first. So in this case, cos 35 to me seems like the most complicated thing. 
By the way, always double check that you're in degree mode. Because we're soon going to be entering into radian mode. At least later on. In other videos I'm going to do that. So it's always good to check you're in degree mode. Unless you never switch back and forth, then you're fine. But cos of 35 should be this number. Okay, fine. And I want to do 2 divided by that number. I do it a little bit backwards. So I do the bottom, then I say 2 divided by that answer. It doesn't matter how you do it, but you should get an answer of 2.44. So in this case, I'll just say it's 2.4. So C is approximately 2.4. There we go. That's how we do this. So now that's 2.4, and maybe I needed that later on to figure out other things, but in this case, that's all I wanted, so that's all I'm doing. I hope you see that uh, sine, cosine, and tangent, then, don't have to be so horrible. You can actually do it, and it's all about understanding trigonometry. It's all about understanding triangles and what happens there. So that way, hopefully, this guy right here, this creepy smile, uh, at least, hopefully, it doesn't scare you as much now to have triangles, right? Because now we're looking at different triangles with angles here. It's all about trigonometry, it's all about triangles.